Okay, some of you uh, in the discussion group talked about comparative advantage. It was a little bit uh, confusing for you. The nice thing about comparative advantage is that it's good for micro and macro. Uh, micro, they tend to talk about businesses. Macro, they might talk about countries. It's the same principle. Uh, with the countries, they'll talk about trade. I don't get into a lot of terms of trade issues. Uh, doesn't tend to come up uh, on the AP exam. And to make matters worse, it's super confusing. So if it's on this year's exam, I am very sorry. Uh, comparative advantage is when there's the firm has a lower opportunity cost. Abs absolute advantage is the super easy one, right? Can I just do something better than somebody else? So if we're looking at Sam's, beef stand and Ed's beef stand. Ed has absolute advantage in everything. He can make 50 beef to 20 beef. He can make 75 hot dogs to 50 hot dogs. So absolute advantage is just very simple in that regard. So don't spend too much time studying it other than knowing it. Comparative advantage, and you can have absolute advantage in everything. Comparative advantage, you can only have comparative advantage in one thing. So you may remember me talking about me and LeBron James playing basketball. He can have absolute advantage in shooting free throws and dunking a basketball, but comparative advantage, he cannot have comparative advantage in both. So he would have comparative advantage in dunking a basketball, but I would have comparative advantage over LeBron James in uh, shooting free throws. So I'm pretty proud of that. Um, I think I'm on my way to the NBA. Uh, so how do we calculate uh, opportunity cost? Well, if we have Sam's opportunity cost for beef, okay. Well, Sam's opportunity cost for beef equals the amount foregone. What are we not doing? We're not doing hot dogs, okay. That's the opportunity cost of beef is... 50 hot dogs over what we're doing, which is the beef, so 50 over 20. So Sam's opportunity cost for beef is 2.5 hot dogs, meaning every beef sandwich he makes, assuming it's constant opportunity cost, has an opportunity cost of 2.5 hot dogs. All right, Ed's opportunity cost for beef equals 75 hot dogs, we're, we're not doing, over the 50 beef sandwiches, which is 1.5 hot dogs, opportunity cost for each beef sandwich is 1.5 hot dogs. Now remember, comparative advantage goes to the lower opportunity cost, so bingo, Ed has comparative advantage for beef. Well, what does this mean? We went through that calculation. We get a lot of benefits from it. We know that Sam has comparative advantage for hot dogs. Why? Well, because Ed cannot have comparative advantage for both. Cannot do it. We could also do the calculation. Okay, so... Sam's opportunity cost for hot dogs is going to equal 20 over 50, which is 0.4, okay? And Ed's opportunity cost for hot dogs is going to be 50 over 75, which is 0.66 repeating. Well, last time I checked, 0.4 is less than 0.6, so we get the verification, if you needed it, that uh, Sam has comparative advantage for hot dogs. Okay, now, if this comes up in some type of question, if Ed and Sam did some type of uh, cooperating venture, they could increase, so as they 
have it, there's a certain production possibilities that they're capable of. While there's, they're capable of producing more if they uh, manipulate and specialize. So if Sam specialized in hot dogs and Ed specialized in beef, they could together uh, produce more than either of them could produce individually. Uh, and that comes up more in terms of countries, but it's just something to know that if they work out some type of specialization. So Sam should specialize in hot dogs if uh, he works out a cooperative venture with Ed and Ed should specialize in beef. And that's comparative advantage. It doesn't matter what the products are. It doesn't matter if this is South Korea and Japan and this is, you know, computers and televisions. It's just the principle of comparative advantage, lower opportunity cost. They love to use the, that idea that you only have comparative advantage for one thing, okay? So just making sure that you know absolute advantage is just who can make it better. And then the basic calculation, okay? And that's a, it's guaranteed this is gonna be on in some way on the AP exam. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe not with the renewed format. Um, trying to get you set up for what I anticipate they can ask questions about. Um, comparative advantage uh, may come up uh, if they do put up some type of production possibilities curve or something like that. Uh, that would be one way that they could uh, include comparative advantage. Okay. All righty.